Shannon? Yes. Good morning. It's Big J here in Billings. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you over in London right now? I am. I am. I'm still enjoying London. Be here through the closing ceremonies. Very nice. And just so everybody, uh, for people that don't know, you are uh, essentially Michael Phelps' idol. You are the winning most (laughs) gymnast ever in the Olympics. Is that correct? That's a pretty amazing introduction. (laughs) You're welcome. You're welcome. She is the winning most, most decorated gymnast, and that's male or female. So you know what's up when it comes to uh, winning medals at the games. Before we get into anything legitimate, I want to know how your medals are displayed. That always interests me. Um, well, not so much displayed. Or, you know, sometimes in a safe deposit box, and other times I try to take them with me as much as possible, especially when uh, I'm around kids, just give them an idea what an Olympic medal looks like. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. I was going to say, what do you mean you don't display it? Because, like, I would have them in, like, a big frame. You know, I'd have them framed and stuff and up on the wall. But I guess, yeah, if you're taking them with you and stuff. I forget <laughs> you need to get out there and, and do that. But you're over there covering uh, gymnastics for Yahoo Sports. And obviously, I mean, most of us probably know, but uh, gymnastics are delivering when it comes to uh, to the drama and intensity that you know people expect with the Olympics this year. It's pretty pretty solid gymnastics, right? It really is. Well, it's always drama, and there's just been so much history made um, this time around, and certainly on the women's side, you're taking gold in the team and gold in the all around as well with Gabby Douglas. And then uh, last night, Ali Raisman finishing up with bronze and gold on the floor exercise. So um, it's been a tremendous haul for the U.S. women, the U.S. men, a bronze medal in the all around. So it's it's been certainly a, a bit of a roller coaster ride, but but it's been great. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, what what do you think in the stands there? I mean, are you rooting for? I mean, as an American, like, are you rooting for Team America, or do you have to stay like objective and just watch it as a as an art form? Um, you know, I do both because uh, you know, go to Team USA. I mean, this is this is my country, and I love seeing um, you know USA on the floor, red, white, and blue, and, and seeing that national anthem, um, hearing that national anthem. But at the same time, I'm, I'm also a broadcaster here. I was doing uh, some of the live commentary, so in that regard, I really look at it through the lens of great gymnastics. You know, we're here to see great gymnastics from all over the world. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's there's a lot of people delivering there. Why is America so good at gymnastics? I mean, we, you know, China just clobbers us in certain events and, you know, dominates and uh, other countries dominate in certain track and field events. But America seems to be pretty solid in gymnastics. Like, why? I mean, why do you think as a country we're so good in that arena? Well, I think, you know, part of it is just having the availability. Um, you know, kids all over the U.S. are able to get into their local gymnastics club, and and we hope that by the U.S. team doing so well, it's going to help these gymnastics clubs thrive, you know, um, moving forward. But, you know, having the opportunity to go in from a very young age, I have a a two-and-a-half-year-old little boy, and and gymnastics is the one thing that he can do at that age because, you know, he really – isn't going to swing a bat or you know do some of these other sports. He can but do he skeet can gain shooting. Some balance and flexibility through gymnastics, and I think that's where it starts. And certainly, when you have teams winning gold medals, it sets that belief in motion. And kids see these athletes and they say, "Wow, you know, if they can do it, maybe I can do that too." But let's get real, Shannon. They can't, right? I mean, the kids at the gym here in Billings are not going to go to the Olympics. Can we just be honest? Uh, no, I would <laughs> never say never. I mean, here I was from Edmond, Oklahoma, and never knew an Olympian, didn't know what gymnastics was, and you ne- I never say never. I know. I just wanted to crush a bunch of dreams there, but I figured you wouldn't get on that van wagon with me. Um, a lot of people. <laughs> Sorry. Are, no problem. A lot of people talking about the financial aspect of the Olympic Games this year. You know, I don't know why it's coming up more now than it seems to have in the past, but they're talking about the the awards that go along with the medals and then the taxes that go along with those and uh, the fact that Ryan Lochte's uh, family's home was in foreclosure and Gabby, her family is in like big financial strain. Like, is there, I mean, do you think Gabby is set for life now with endorsements and stuff? I mean, you know how it works after the Olympics. Like, is her family going to be fine because of just that one all-around gold medal? I mean, is that possible? Yeah. I think there would be very few athletes that would be, quote, set for life. Um, I think it's all about making the right decisions 
and building a legacy. And I think, you know, you don't get into the Olympics. You don't get um, on this path to make money. Um, that's kind of the one thing about the Olympics. There are, there are a few athletes that will um, do very well, and there are a majority of the athletes that will not. And and that's not really the point. It's to go and represent your country on the international stage. So kind of anything else that happens is great. And um, yeah, I think Gabby is, is going to have to make some uh, important decisions regarding finances and where she wants to go from here on out with her gymnastics career and her life. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what is the possibility for somebody after the Olympics in gymnastics? I mean, for you, I mean... I just like to know the options. I mean, obviously, we there are the endorsements. You know, you can do your Subway commercials. You can, you know, get on the Wheaties box and do things like that. And then you, obviously, are covering sports. So they've got the option of doing commentary and uh, those sort of things. Uh, and then there's the tours. I know that those happen where you can kind of go around the country with Bella Caroli and his crew and do some stuff. But what other ways are there for for gymna- gymnasts specifically to continue working in that field, you know, and not selling cars or something after the olympics oh kind of depends on where your passions lie a lot of uh you know former athletes go into coaching judging um they've grown up in a gym maybe their parents own a gym or uh, they're involved in that world so they want to stick to that world go on to competing in ncaa competition i mean these girls are at an age where um they have not gone to college yet so they've got to make that decision of um you know do I go to college and when, and and will I be able to do gymnastics in college, and some of those questions as well. And then you have athletes that go on to do completely different things outside of the sport altogether. You have Amy Chow from my team, who's now a pediatrician. She's my on-call gal (laughs) when my son gets sick. So, Um, so, you know, the world is open to you, and I think it's really about you now have this voice. What are you going to do with this voice? You can come. Olga Corbett just came and uh, lit our torch for our uh, state games here. So there's an option as well, lighting torches. There you go. I mean, she's been. You could just go around lighting torches. Exactly. And that would be pretty cool. People say, what's your title? And you just say torch lighter. I just go all over the world and light, light torches. Is it uh, a lot <laughs> of Olympic type stuff for you? I mean, or is most of the time, are you a mom? Or, I mean, how, many, how often are you doing like speaking engagements, judging, hosting, covering? I mean, how often are you doing involved with gymnastics in your personal life? Um, I'm fairly involved with gymnastics, but it's not kind of my main job. I own a company that specializes in women's health and fitness. So I write books, I do videos, I do a television show, I do a radio show. Um, So that's kind of my normal life. And then, you know, every two to four years, uh, I really kind of focus in on gymnastics, certainly around the Olympics, um, in the broadcasting area and whatnot. But um, but you have to decide kind of what, what else you want to do with your life. Yeah, exactly. You got to kind of branch out there and do something else. How quickly does it come up when anybody challenges you in life that you're the winning most Olympian? Like, do you drop that card as often as I would? <laughs> like for dinner, um, somebody I overcharges. Guess I probably you? don't personally drop it, but um, it's it's always a nice thing to remember. You have a bad day, or you know things aren't going quite your way, and you remember, oh yeah, well okay. I've got a couple gold medals. It's, it's not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, life is okay. It's got to. And I'm glad you can admit that because some people would try to make it sound like it's no big deal. And it's like, no, it's a big deal. It's one of those things that you never forget. It's like being the president. It's not 20 years after you're the president, you're not going to be like, man, my life just sucks. You're still going to remember like, oh, yeah, I was the president of America. Like, <laughs> you are. Well, there's a lot of pride that goes with representing the United States of America. So it's. It's all good. Absolutely. It's very good. I can imagine. I mean, and that's what was cool to me about Phelps is I was afraid he was going to be humble, and luckily he's not humble in the slightest. And he just said, you know, I wanted to be the best athlete ever, and now I've achieved that, and I am the best athlete ever, and now I'm done. And I just, I, I kind of like sometimes when you're that good to hear a little bit of confidence like that, where you're like, you know what, yeah, I, I'm pretty badass at what I do, and and uh, and it's for the country. Do you agree? We talked to uh, Dan O'Brien, track and field buddy of yours, over there covering for Yahoo earlier, and uh, he agreed with me that uh, the athletes shouldn't have to pay taxes on the money they get with the medals. Are you, as a multiple medal winner, winner in agreement with that? You know, I have no idea, honestly. I have not even been aware of those stories. I've been so tunnel vision with with gymnastics, so I have. I'm not. 
I'm not equipped to answer that question okay. right now. Shannon, you're a business owner. I, I you would need... assume that, the, you know. Well, here's the thing. Is you would hope you wouldn't have to, but you yeah, know. Yeah, they're taxing. They give you, you know, 25 Gs for a gold medal, and they ta- they take like 9,000 of it back for taxes. And I'm like, these people dedicate their life to representing the United States. Like, why are we taxing them? Get, just give them the friggin' money and the medals. It only happens every four years. Like, don't. It's, I think that we can, you know, cut a few social programs to support good athletes. Like, let a few babies starve to get us a few better gymnas- gymnasts in there. That's what I say. And another thing you don't have to agree with, Shannon, you can just be silent. And I'll just, you just, <laughs> I don't really have much of a comment on that. I'm, yeah. I'm excited I was young when I won my medals. So my parents got to handle all of that. <laughs> good, that good. They set you up there. What's it like over there in the – oh, here's another thing that I wanted to know. And somebody asked me about this while the events were happening. In gymnastics, during like the all-around, they have different events going on at one time, like beam as at the same time as floor routine. Is that right? Yes, yes so everything goes at once. Why do they do that? I mean, like, especially with, like, big-time event, like, when you're when you're really wanting to watch, don't the people that set up the Olympics know that, like, they should stop and, like, let one person at a time go because everybody wants to watch, like, Gabby on the beam, and instead, but at the same time they've got, you know, some other good gymnast over on the... Like, why do they do that in the... I could understand it if it's just a meet, but once you get to the Olympic level... Don't you think they'd slow it down and put a spotlight on each individual performance, like one by one? Well, the, the competition would be about 10 hours long if you did that. <laughs> there are so many events and so many competitors. Um, yeah, that would take a really long time. Plus, the athletes are used to it. I mean, this is what this is what we train with. This is what we expect. And, and it's really not too horrible for the audience when you're sitting in the arena you're very it's, it's very easy to kind of look from one event to the next if you're sitting at home you know that that's different because you're not seeing it on the television and, and sometimes they'll replay some of the other other athletes but but if you're in the arena you know you, you're just kind of looking down and you get to kind of see whatever you want to see I see. I like it. All right. Well, I always had just uh, wondered how that all worked. Well, who's the uh, – Shannon, is there anybody that uh, has a chance of uh, being put up there on the pedestal that you're on as a uh, greatest gymnast ever, or is this year – are you safe again? Um, I, I'm guessing that we're going to have a few, a few of these athletes go for Rio. So that would really? be very exciting. Because and, uh, they're amazing, so they could definitely top me in Rio. The past four Olympics, this might not be true, but I'm pretty sure the past four Olympics, the entire uh, gymnastics female gymnastics team has been all rookies. Because they're saying, I think Bob Costas said it, but he is a known liar. But they said because now age is such a factor that, like, once you turn 18, you're out of the Olympics if you're a gymnast. They're like, there's a 16 year old ready to take your place. And so they said that yeah, these I girls get really one shot. True. We had, yeah, that we had a lot of, we actually had a lot of uh, um, uh, early 20s, at late 20s competitors in this competition. We had a lot of two time Olympians. Um, I just, uh, even a few three-time Olympians here in this competition. So I don't know that um, that totally rings true. The U.S. team was very young, but that's why I think many of them could actually stick around for Rio. Yeah. Would you, if you see, just because Bob Costas is the one that told me that, if you see him around, will you punch him in the face for me, please? For setting me in the I wrong don't direction. I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to. Shannon, uh, it's been such an honor to talk to you. The most decorated uh, gymnast ever, Shannon Miller, over there in London, covering it for Yahoo Sports. You can go to Yahoo, click on the Olympic tab, and we'll see what uh, is going on over there from Shannon, who knows what's up for sure. It's been a pleasure, Shannon. Thanks so much for taking time for us, and uh, enjoy London. All right, thanks so much. All right, bye-bye. The Big J Show. Weekday mornings from 6 till 10. On Billings' number one hit music station, Hot 101.9.